Hi everyone and uh, a pleasant good Sunday to you. Rob Blackman here with Bobby Riddell and Chris Foreman and man are we glad to see you today. It's another special edition of our Boiler Ball pregame show and because we're speaking on this Sunday you know what that means. Purdue is going to be playing Monday night for the national championship in men's college basketball. Purdue a 63 to 50 winner on Saturday evening over North Carolina State. We're going to talk an awful lot about that victory here in just a moment, but first things first, we want to relive some of the excitement from the Purdue locker room after that win yesterday evening. Our own videographer, Corey Palm, was in the Purdue locker room to catch the reaction of our players. So let's take a, uh, take a look and a listen. Uh, Purdue basketball celebrating last night's win over North Carolina State. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit bigger than Mackey, but we love it. We love the support, and it's like a comfort to us whenever we have so many fans in the stadium because we want to play hard for them. You know, they're pride, they're prideful for us, just like we're prideful for them, and it's a family affair. So. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's something as a kid you dream of. Um, personally, I never thought we'd be in this. I'd be in this point. Um, so, still just kind of thinking about it, but I'm, we're all super excited. That first feeling of running out there was just, it was just crazy. Um, it's something that I've dreamed of ever since I was a little kid. I've, I've watched March Madness since however long I can remember. Um, so that first feeling running out there was awesome, but then we quickly had to make it a reality and, you know, just say the sooner we can take this all in, the better we're going to be. Uh, it's everything. It's everything we've worked for, everything we've thought about, a lot of, a lot of late nights, can't even sleep because you're thinking about it. It's um, it's been tough, but we fought, and uh, we're going to keep fighting. We got 40 more minutes till we're national champs, so uh, we're going to push everybody as as far as we can, and we're going to play as hard as we can. Uh, like no one, no one's celebrating right now. We're we're going to keep locked in, and keep um, keep focusing on these games plans, and uh, get back to work. It feels great. I think that's something that everybody's been working on for the past three, four years, and we're finally here. We've done the work to get this far, but the job, the job is not finished yet. I think it just shows how, how well the coach and how well coached we are. I think Payne always tells us to, you know, stay, play the same game we, we're playing no matter what, up 20, down 20. So I think we're just we're, we're yakking at, you know, what do we need to, you know, what, we knock down a lead or, or push the lead to whatever. I think we just play our same game no matter what and just do what we need to do. He just told us, you know, it's not our effort. It's just our concentration. Um, so when we're not concentrating, when we're turning the ball over, when we're not doing little things on the offense and defensive end, that's just, you know, going to make it a lot harder for us to, to win the game. And so when we were able to make a few adjustments and just concentrate more, that, that ended up helping us, you know, lock in as a team and end up getting the win. Yeah, I mean, we've been through those situations all year. Um, last year, this year, teams have went on runs. I mean, it's just how we handle ourselves and just keep playing basketball. I mean, when, when they get the crowd going, um, we just got to move the ball, throw it into Z. They'll make a play. So. Every win is not going to be, you know, nice and pretty. Um, this one happened to be grinded out. Uh, you know, we stuck with it. You know, they made runs. Uh, we had dead periods, but most importantly, we, we, we stayed with it. And, you know, we got necessary stops down the stretch. You know, we always talk to each other at halftime or in the huddles about just whether they're runs. We're playing against great teams. They're going to have runs. They're really well coached. They want to win, too. And so we just have to do our best of limiting that. It's going to happen, but we have to do our best to limit that and then respond. And I think that we've done a pretty good job throughout this tournament. No, exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's why I kept, you know, on saying in the huddles, just keep on getting the defensive stop. You know what I mean? We're winning the game. We keep on getting the defensive stops. We're going <laughs> to win the game. That's just how it is. It's how math works. So, um, no, we just did a phenomenal job on the defensive end. And I think it shows our, you know, toughness and poise that even when things aren't going great offensively, um, we can still lock down on defense. Um, it's really nice when you have awesome teammates and awesome coaching staff. Like They just told me to keep the confidence up, keep doing you. We need you to lead this team and impact the game in a different way. When shots aren't falling, I mean, defensively impact the game, um, rebound and impact the game, um, and get an assist. It does not surprise me anymore. Um, I think it surprises a lot of people, but he's the best player in the country for a, we uh, a reason. He's won that award again for a reason. So, you know, I think a lot of people hate on him, and he does not deserve the hate he gets for, for just being tall. I mean, he, he wants it, man. He really wants it. Um, he's won so many awards, and that's not what he cares about. Uh, you know, for him, it's winning a national championship. And I think when you have that toughness, obviously he's, uh, he's gifted to be able to be that big and to be in, in that great shape. Um, but I think it's, it's just more his will than anything. A lot of tall people can't just play 40 minutes in a, in a Final Four game and have 20 and 10. So I think that just you know shows how much 
time he's put in and how hard he's worked to get to the point, not only on the court and, and his ability to rebound and score the ball, but also his conditioning. Of course we have Zach, of course we have Braden, Lance and Fletcher that can go and get 30 any night, but sometimes that doesn't happen and everybody has to be ready to do their job. You know, We preach, do your job, do your job, do your job. Not everybody's job is to score. Some guy's job is to come in and foul and play defense. No matter what it is, you got to be able to really do your job and especially we will have to be ready Monday. We've played basketball for so many years. Now we're on the stage that we've worked for. This is uh, why we play. And uh, there's there's no reason for us to go out there non-confident or not trusting one another to go make a play. Um, I mean, I think we're just all willing to do what we need to do to help the team win, whether that's scoring, playing defense, you know, assists, moving the ball. I, th I think we're all just ready to play. And, and even if we're not you know, a person that's really playing to score in a certain play or moment, I think we're all ready no matter what for anything to happen. I mean, that's the biggest thing. I think if, if there was that one you know, thing that makes a, our team special, um, obviously we have a lot of talent, but it's just the mindset of everybody to, that we all have that shared same goal, to win a national championship. No matter what, we don't have any selfishness or don't have any, you know, me basketball. You know, we all, um, at the end of the day, we're going to do what's best for the team. And I think when you have a group of guys like that, there's, we don't have possessions where we're selfish. We're always trying to do the right thing. And I think that just, that's what separates you from other teams. And a big thank you to Corey Palm again for uh, capturing all that video for us uh, in that Purdue locker room. Although I will say this, Bob Burdell, while excited to be playing in the national championship game, you could tell from our players right there, but that, uh, yeah, it's cool, it's cool, but the job isn't finished yet. No doubt about it. It's kind of been a constant theme for this Purdue team outside of uh, that Midwest Regional Championship game, of course, against Tennessee. Uh, you know, a big celebration that was uh, warranted, of course, for, for making that Final Four the first time since 1980. But, you know, the rest of these wins throughout the, uh, the tournament have definitely been very businesslike from a celebratory standpoint. Kind of, you know, have that eye on the prize. And, you know, now that we're here at the Final Four, uh, they're not content with just, you know, reaching the National Championship game. Uh, they want to cut down all the nets and get that one shining moment uh, in their favor. Last night, Chris Foreman, 20 points, 12 rebounds, four assists, two blocks for Zach Eady. Those numbers put him in very, in a very, very, very unique and uh, specific company. Do we do this every, every <laughs> time we do this? Yes, you know, yes, like just the numbers yes. he puts up? Um, yeah, first player in about 50 years to record that in a, in a Final Four game, those numbers. Mm -hmm. Marcus Johnson of UCLA in uh, 76. Um, he's the first since a guy named Carmelo Anthony, oh, yeah. who like who didn't have the blocks um, in 2003. <laughs> so, um, again, just you know, he had 20 and 12, and it was like, man, that's kind of a little bit of an off game for yeah, him lately. Yeah. But um, again, he dominated. His matchup was tough. DJ Burns, obviously a mm -hmm. huge body, um, didn't really let Zach get to his spots, pushed him out a little bit further. Mm -hmm. But he was hitting the the 10 to 12 foot hooks right. instead of the six to eight footers. So. Um, again, just a, a just a workmanlike effort. Um, his turnovers were a little bit high. He, you know, they really swiped at the ball a lot. Um, but, you know, again, just a dominant performance for Zach on the offensive end. Well, our team's turnovers were quite high, so it isn't all on Zach. 16 turnovers, Bob. Yet, Purdue still found a way to win that game. Yes, we did. You know, now we're seven and four on the season when we have that 14 to 17 turnover uh, number there, but. Uh, Purdue made enough shots from three. You know, what you can't have and what we've seen sometimes with our losses is the high turnovers coinciding with the poor three-point percentage. Yep. Uh, we fortunately did not have that same uh, situation last night where the three-point shooting definitely came through in big moments. Um, yeah, we saw sometimes Zach getting some of those strips on, on the double downs, but then Zach in other occasions uh, had the wherewithal to, to see that double coming and then kick it out to some guys where they had left um, and they were able to capitalize with some big shots. So. Um, it was nice that Purdue was able to, you know, grind that one out in a way um, that they haven't at times this year when those t turnovers get high, but uh, they came through in, in big moments to be able to get the win. You know, the other thing, Bob, and we harped on the turnovers a lot on the broadcast last night because we thought it was significant, but when you do go ba back and look at the hard numbers, points off of turnovers, right. Purdue actually won that category 11 to 10 as North Carolina State had 11 turnovers of their own. Yeah, that, that was a huge part of that game was you know, North Carolina State not being able to capitalize on, on those turnovers from a point standpoint like they obviously would have liked to. And I'd be curious to go back and see how many of the turnovers ended up being live ball versus dead ball. Uh, it did feel like there was a good chunk of them that were dead ball, and, and those obviously are, are helpful. You know, we had a shot clock violation towards the end that we were kind of like, 
hey, we're fully, you know, you hate to have that, of course, you want that better possession, but you're like, hey, we're content, we got the time and score in our favor here, um, we're going to be able to win this game because um, now we can come back and set our defense. So, um, yeah, it was, it was uh, interesting to say the least, but it was nice that they weren't able to come down and get open threes cap and cash those in or get dunks at, at the rim. I'm going to have a little bit of fun with our fans here uh, because uh, it's about this time last year when uh, this talk of Lance Jones coming into the Purdue basketball family was beginning to pick up some steam. And there were a number of you, don't pretend like you didn't say it, <laughs> that were questioning if indeed Lance Jones would be a good fit for the Boilermakers. Well, I would say 14 points in a national championship semifinal game uh, last night, Chris. I think that would validate him coming on board. And yeah. man, has he meant a lot to our team? Yeah, just a, a massive game last night for Lance. Hit the hit four three pointers, um, two in the first half, two in the second half. And his one uh, with about six five minutes left right around there was probably the dagger mm -hmm. that won the game for Purdue. But I was more impressed with what he did defensively. I know yeah. DJ Horn got twenty points, but on twenty one shots, on twenty one shots, that's all he got. That's all NC State got really. Um, and, you know, he just really led a really strong defensive effort, especially on the perimeter. Fletcher Lawyer held Casey Marcel. Yes. About 0 of uh, 6, 0 of 5. 0 of 5. Yeah. Yep. Um, they just got nothing on the perimeter, um, nothing inside. The defensive effort last night was absolutely outstanding. 21 points in the second half, and seven of them came in the last two minutes. Oh, so wow. they had 14 points in the first 18 minutes. So um, Lance just really brought a lot of energy. He, he plays excited. You can see it sometimes early in games until he settles in. But... Um, he was locked in from the start last night. It was really good to see. You know what else was really good to see? The number of Purdue fans in the building. Mm -hmm. We in the pregame show were talking about, the, if you just look at the hard numbers for stadium capacity, for basketball they listed around 63,000 or so. From what I understand, it was well north of 70,000, yeah. right, last it was, night? It was about 75,000. Oh, I, don't, I don't know if that was the official capacity they list for basketball. Um, you know, I don't know how that works or whatever. But, yeah, it was 75,000. And I would, I mean, there had to have been 30,000 Purdue oh. fans in there. It was insane in there last night. They would do the, you know, they'd do the things where it was like NC State fans, you cheer, and then Purdue, and it was just not even close. So, um, and from what I hear, there's a lot more reinforcements coming down mm -hmm. uh, today and stuff. So. Um, it was just an unbelievable scene. I get chills thinking about it right now. It was, it was uh, definitely a very uh, memorable experience. And I even showed Chris this la last night after the game. A friend of mine was trying to get some NCAA Purdue Final Four gear in the stadium, and it was completely sold out yeah. for <laughs> Purdue fans. So uh, there was Purdue fans clearly in full force, and they were there uh, just gobbling up uh, all the, the gear they could get. I'll, I'll say this too. It was, it's incredible to see the number of former players Oh, that were here oh. last night. Oh. Um, I mean, it just from the 1960s to oh. 2020. I mean, it was it was pretty insane. They put out a tweet. I don't know if you guys saw this with uh, college basketball on Fox. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had the UConn alums and yes. Purdue alums, and it was you know Dakota Mathias, <laughs> Ryan Klein, Ryan Smith, each one, and then they put out the UConn alums, <laughs> and it was. Ray Allen, Rip Hamilton, Omeka Oka Four, and they're like, we should run it back before. And Ryan Smith was like, no, nah, we need to chill yeah, on that. Should, you know, it's but, not quite a fair fight. But, yeah, yeah, the UConn alums are a little more uh, high profile in the NBA, but it, it was just amazing to see all of the alums back last night. It uh, it was quite a scene, uh, folks, and we hope we've done uh, you know a little part, uh, our little part, to maybe bring you uh, just a little bit of the feel and the emotion of what's going on here in uh, in Phoenix. Uh, I know a number of you that are watching this are with us here in Phoenix, but uh, some of you may be not able to make the trip. So we're just trying to do our part to maybe make you feel a part of it because trust me, boy, to make your nation, you are a huge part of this. Purdue going to play for a national championship for the first time since 1969. That was late March of 1969. Purdue played UCLA losing 92 to 72. Uh, let's see if maybe things will turn out a little bit better for our Boilermakers here in 2024. Uh, before we uh, cut you loose here, uh, Chris, uh, our schedule uh, for our team here the rest of the day. We are filming this uh, early in the morning here in Phoenix, uh, uh, local time. So what's on the docket for our team today? Uh, we got, um we're leaving about 10:40 to go over to the stadium. We got it. We have to make a pit stop um, at the Phoenix Art Center. Zach Eady's winning the Naismith Award, um, so they're presenting that to him this morning. We're going to pop in. I would say breaking news, but by the time you yeah. see this, he will have already won it. <laughs> um, so we're going to pop in. He's going to say a couple things, take a couple pictures. Ralph Sampson's going to be there, which is really cool. Wow. So we'll get you know a former, two, the last two-time winner of the award. So 
uh, get a couple pictures there, roll to the arena. Uh, we got about two hours of media mm. stuff again, so uh, the guys will be thrilled with that. And then, uh, <laughs> and then practicing, and that's you know really about it today. And then I'm not sure if we'll shoot around tomorrow. I'm sure we will since it's a later game, but um, you know, kind of a quiet day. Not really. I don't know if you call it quiet with the media in practice, but um, should be done by three thirty, four o'clock today. So it'll be a uh, another long day, but. You know, well worth it to be playing on a Monday night. What a great problem to have. Bob and I mentioned this at the end of the broadcast uh, last night. If there is one date on the schedule, on the calendar, that every college basketball coach wants to have circled because his team is scheduled to play that day, it's the first Monday in April. And that is the day in which Purdue will be playing Monday night, April 8th, Purdue and UConn for the national championship. I want to say this too, and I'm sure we'll talk about this tomorrow as a preview or whatever, but... How cool is it that the two best teams in college basketball yeah. all season are going to play for a title? Like, you don't see that very right. often. Especially in a tournament like the NCAA tournament where you just oftentimes, you know, maybe the best team in the country doesn't win the championship, let alone you actually get the two best teams in the country facing off. So uh, that's going to be really unique and, and a fun environment. Yeah, tomorrow on the Boiler Ball pregame show, uh, we will indeed uh, put a lot more focus on UConn and give you the scouting report on what to look for for the Yukon Huskies when Purdue battles them tomorrow night in Glendale. Uh, for now, we'll say so long. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, everyone. We will speak again tomorrow. Thanks to Chris and to Bobby. Thanks to Corey behind the scenes. I'm Rob Blackman. Boiler up and hammer down.